We live in a world of challenges, dangers, and stress. According to Time magazine, 19 million Americans are afflicted with anxiety disorder. We all experience stress, sometimes severe stress in our cities, relationships, finances, and jobs. One survey found that 40% of workers reported that their job is, quote, very or extremely stressful, end of quote. Stress can damage or kill you. How can you survive your stress? Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. In 1970, author Alvin Toffler challenged society. He anticipated that the rate of change in our society would increase rapidly. And haven't many of us experienced information overload? In his book, titled Future Shock, Toffler's first chapter was titled The Death of Permanence. He begins with these 1970 comments, quote, in the three short decades between now and the 21st century, millions of ordinary, psychologically normal people will face an abrupt collision with the future. Citizens of the world's richest and most technologically advanced nations, many of them will find it increasingly painful to keep up with the incessant demand for change that characterizes our time. For them, the future will have arrived too soon. End of quote. That's page 11. Have you found it increasingly painful to keep up with the incessant demand for change? Technology has improved the quality of life for many, but it has also challenged us with a more complex and faster-paced civilization. What happened to the simple life of the past? Now in the 21st century, anxiety, disorder, and stress afflict millions. Just the stress of everyday life can kill us. We live in crowded cities. We commute in congested traffic. We interact with argumentative people. We face financial, social, and job-related problems. Traffic noise, construction noise, transportation noise, industrial noise, and loud, raucous music disturbs us. And then add to those stresses the frightening terrors attacking our cities and nations. My friends, how are you coping with stress? Are you dealing with stress? On today's program, we'll be discussing significant physical and spiritual strategies that can help you survive stress. And we'll be offering you an inspiring free one-hour audio tape that will give you more information than we have time for on this program. It's titled, Overcoming Your Anxieties. This audio tape also gives you five vital keys to happiness. Be sure to write down the phone number on your screen to order your free copy. You can also order this free audio tape on our website, at tomorrowsworld.org. A 2001 survey sponsored by the Marlin Company and the American Institute of Stress reported the following, quote, The vast majority of American workers say they are stressed. More than a third say that their job is harming their physical and emotional well-being. Forty-two percent say job pressures are interfering with their family or personal lives and half report more demanding workloads than they had a year ago, end of quote. In June 2002, Time magazine featured the American problem of anxiety disorder. Quote, There is certainly a lot of anxiety going around. Anxiety disorder, which is what health experts call any anxiety that persists to the point that it interferes with one's life, is the most common mental illness in the United States. In its various forms, ranging from very specific phobias to generalized anxiety disorder, it afflicts 19 million Americans, end of quote. In February 2003, Time magazine covered, featured America the Anxious. The nation was on a heightened security alert. Time commented, quote, Americans are trying to cope with an uncertain future, end of quote. The same weekend, Newsweek's cover featured anxiety and your brain. Newsweek commented, quote, as they reach for the duct tape, 
Americans say they're more anxious than ever, end of quote. My friends, we need to face our fears. We need to take care of our minds and our bodies. How can we overcome our anxieties? Let's understand. God has set in motion natural laws of health. We need to be in harmony with those laws. They are common sense laws. But many in our Western world ignore common health laws and practice self-indulgence instead. Years ago, Roderick Meredith wrote a helpful summary called The Seven Laws of Radiant Health. They're well known to all of us, or at least they should be. But let me just list them. We need a fundamental awareness of them. And if we want to survive stress, we need to consistently practice them. Number one, eat a proper diet. Number two, learn to exercise regularly and, when possible, vigorously. Three, get the proper amount of sleep and rest. Four, ensure that you are getting enough sunshine and fresh air. Five, practice cleanliness and wear proper clothing. Six, avoid bodily injury. And seven, maintain a positive attitude. Do you maintain a positive attitude? Or are you a worry wart, as some people are called? Anxiety and worry intensify stress. The Sermon on the Mount gives us strong advice on how to cope with worry and anxiety. Turn in your Bible to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Here, Jesus gave core teachings of Christianity. Be sure to read Matthew chapters 5 through 7. The last section of chapter 6 is titled, Do Not Worry. Can you follow this advice? Matthew 6 and verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Worrying of and by itself will not improve your circumstances. But God can provide you with all your needs. As it states in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Pray and ask God to intervene for you. Jesus emphasized this key point in Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Strive to live each day by faith, and you'll reduce your level of stress. But is stress all bad? Endocrinologist Hans Selye defines stress as, quote, the nonspecific response of the body to any demand made upon it, end of quote. That's from Stress Without Distress, page 14. This definition accounts for good types of stress or eustress, for example, a job promotion, as well as bad stress or distress, for example, finding that you have bounced a check. Physiologically, both types of stress are the same. They result in increased blood pressure, increased respiratory rates, increased digestive activity, increased sugar and fatty acids in the circulatory system, increased metabolism, increased sodium retention, and decreased immune function. We need motivation to be successful in life. Greenberg comments, quote, The goal of stress management is not to eliminate all stress, end of quote. We need stressors in our life to make it fun and interesting. Certain stressors will also help us to be more productive. Deadlines and rewards for completing tasks, for example, motivate us. Greenberg emphasizes this, quote, our goal should be to limit the harmful effects of stress while maintaining life's quality and vitality, end of quote. Can we achieve that goal? As we saw earlier, the Bible reveals the way to peace of mind and success. We must choose the greatest priority in life. Matthew 6.33 set the goal for us. Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We'll discuss more vital strategies for surviving and overcoming stress in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you this extremely informative audio tape titled, Overcoming Your Anxieties. 
This one-hour audio tape gives you four key principles to overcome your worries, phobias, stresses, and anxieties. Key number one is to understand the future and face reality. Bible prophecy reveals the good news of God's coming kingdom and the peaceful world to come under the rulership of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. This free audio tape gives you many practical and wonderful principles to help you grow in faith and confidence. It also includes an important segment titled, Vital Keys to Happiness. This free audio tape gives you more strategies to cope with stress than we have time on this program. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape, Overcoming Your Anxieties. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World. P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that applying the seven laws of radiant health can help us reduce negative stress. Exercise helps us to reduce stress. The Apostle Paul wrote the evangelist Timothy, For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That's in 1 Timothy 4, 8. Paul was pointing out that godliness is a higher priority with longer-lasting benefits. Nonetheless, bodily exercise does benefit. One lesson I've learned was, when feeling depressed, go out and jog or run. I found that I felt better mentally and emotionally, as well as physically. Are you getting enough exercise? Are you getting enough rest and sleep? You need to. Many businesses operate 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some ambitious employees even work seven days a week. But the Creator God who made the human body commanded us to rest one day a week on the Sabbath. That's the fourth commandment, Exodus 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Roderick Meredith recently presented a program on this subject. Sabbatarian Christians rejoice in the opportunity to rest, to worship and meditate. They can rest physically and rejoice spiritually. God's gift of the Sabbath is a major benefit in reducing stress. Many successful people who feel they experience a normal life will oftentimes face a crisis as we all do. A sudden heart attack or stroke may require hospitalization. An auto accident may cut short the life of a teen son or daughter. A natural disaster may destroy a home or a city. A physical exam may discover the presence of cancer. The loss of a job may jeopardize a family's financial security. The Apostle James faced trials in his life. What was his attitude and what advice does he give us when we face trials and tribulations? If you have your Bible, turn to the book of James. James 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, how can one count as joy something that may be stressful and agonizing? Let's understand. The experience may be painful, but you can count the experience as joy because you understand that there'll be a long-lasting and long-term blessing and benefit. A trial can strengthen your faith and your character if you trust God to bring you through the trial. You can reduce your stress and anxiety by looking ahead to the long-term benefits. The greatest benefits include godly patience and godly character. One of my favorite verses among hundreds of favorite verses is Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Jacob's teenage son Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. 
his father grieved, thinking that his son Joseph was dead. Now, how could that tragedy have worked together for good? Joseph endured trials in Egypt, but after many years, he was made ruler under Pharaoh over the entire Egyptian empire. Joseph later told his guilty brothers in Genesis 45 and verse 7, God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Read the complete story in Genesis chapters 37 through 50. All things do work together for good to those who love God. My friends, when you face trials and stress, remember these verses. James 1 verse 2 and Romans 8 verse 28. They have helped me countless times and they can help you. The Apostle Paul also experienced many trials and tribulations. He lists them in 2 Corinthians 11th chapter beginning with verse 23. And through all these sufferings, the Apostle Paul kept his eyes on the goal. When he pleaded with the Lord to remove a thorn in the flesh, the Lord responded to him in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul then states to us, Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You also can have the power of Christ, as we saw in last week's program. As it states in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Remember the Apostle Peter's admonition on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, verse 38? Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can have this gift, the most valuable gift you could ever receive. If you have seriously considered baptism, and if you have seriously prayed about making a life commitment, I'd like to encourage you to counsel with one of our ministers. Just call the number on your screen and request a counseling. Did you know that even while the Apostle Paul was in prison, he wrote encouragement to others? Turn in your Bible to Philippians 4 and verse 8. Paul exhorts us here to think on these subjects. Finally, brethren... Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Think about these things that are true. What is true? Jesus prayed to the Father in John 17:17, 17, 17, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. On what else should you meditate? Philippians 4, 8 emphasizes, Whatever things are lovely. Sometimes when I want to counteract stress, I focus on lovely picturesque scenes that I have seen in my travels. I think of the sunsets that I've seen in Clearwater Beach in Florida or North Carolina. I think of lakes and mountains and beautiful rainbows. I also listen to soothing, beautiful music for relaxation. Meditate on the positive and you will reduce stress. Turn in your Bible to Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 6. Can you apply this advice to cope with your stress? Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. By prayer, you can maintain a positive and tranquil mind. That's one of the seven laws of radiant health. The Apostle Paul spent years in prison for the sake of the gospel. Paul faced stress and distress, but as we've seen, he kept a positive mind. How can you do the same? We'll answer that question in the conclusion of the program. But first, I'd like to offer you this extremely informative free audio tape titled, Overcoming Your Anxieties. This one-hour audio tape gives you four key principles to overcome your worries, phobias, stresses, and anxieties. 
Key number four, for example, is to pray about everything that worries you. When you face the problems and stresses that worry you, when you take them to God in prayer, you can deal with your stress and you can overcome your stress. This exciting free audio tape includes an important segment titled Vital Keys to Happiness. The segment presents five vital keys, one of which we've discussed on this program, Maintain a Positive Mind. You need this free audio tape, so pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape, Overcoming Your Anxieties. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insight on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Millions in our Western world are worried, anxious, and stressed. What are you worried about right now? What are your anxieties? What stresses you? First of all, clearly identify your concerns. Verbalize your worry and take it to God in prayer. Be specific. Are you facing financial problems, for example? Tell God your situation. Share it with Him. Ask for wisdom to do your part. Ask for mercy and deliverance but also do it with thanksgiving. Thank God for the privilege of coming before His throne of grace. A thankful attitude will also help reduce stress. Notice the amazing result if you pray about everything that worries you. Philippians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Another one of the great promises in the Bible to help you survive stress is found in Matthew 11, verse 28. Our Savior recognized that many of us are bearing great emotional burdens and stress. Jesus says to you and me, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Trust Christ to share your burdens. He knows what it's like to endure pain and pressure. Give your life to Him, and you will find rest for your souls. Let the Lord carry your burdens. As it tells us in 1 Peter 5, verse 7, Cast all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Some of you may have grown up in dysfunctional homes. You may have burdens of guilt, or you hold long-term resentment toward others. Have you considered letting go and letting God take care of the situation? As it tells us in Proverbs 20 and verse 22, Do not say, I will recompense evil. Wait for the Lord, and He will save you. Have you considered forgiving those who have oppressed you? Jesus taught us to forgive others. Remember the model prayer in Matthew 6:12. We need to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Have you forgiven anyone recently? Forgiveness can even help one overcome depression, according to Paul Meyer, M.D. Dr. Meyer writes in his book, Don't Let Jerks Get the Best of You, quote, A patient can be depressed for many years, then forgive the one who caused his repressed anger, and totally recover from the depression because the serotonin has been restored naturally and the brain is able to work correctly. That's on page 170. Forgiving others can produce peace of mind. You can turn your depressed life around and begin to experience joy and happiness. On today's program, we've seen that God has given us the responsibility to take care of our mind, body, and spirit. We can cope with stress. We can survive stress. Apply the seven laws of radiant health. 
Maintain a positive attitude. Forgive others. Take time every day for prayer, Bible reading, and meditating on the truth of God. Work diligently, exercise regularly, and strive for adequate sleep and rest. Pray about everything that worries you, and pray with thanksgiving. Ask God for faith and spiritual power. One of the great promises God gives us is recorded in Luke 11 and verse 13. Jesus said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? God's Spirit can give you the love you need. Divine love can overcome fears and phobias. As the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 4.18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Christians will always endure difficult times, but God gives us the spiritual faith and the confidence to face our trials. Read the entire epistle to the Philippian Christians. The Apostle Paul uses the word rejoice ten times in eight verses. Notice this exhortation in Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Our confidence, our peace of mind is in the Lord, not in ourselves. When we have surrendered our lives to the Creator of the universe and His Son, Jesus Christ, we can overcome stress and have joy and peace. Be sure to request your free one-hour audio tape, Overcoming Your Anxieties. It also includes a vital segment on Vital Keys to Happiness. This audio tape includes more strategies for dealing with stress and overcoming the emotional and psychological pressures we all face. Be sure to join us each week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So join us again next week right here at the same time. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation, if you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. To view today's program, order the free literature offered or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.